Hello and good evening. So everyone's back from the holidays. UBS Games is back from the holidays. You know, we're back into the second week of January here. And so we've started to get some early January news and events and announcements from UBS Games. Not really a ton of them quite yet, but a bunch of pretty important ones and, and stuff that's worth going over. So, you know, we're going to do that here. First and foremost, the thing that's going to matter for the most people is probably this Challenger Redemption Driven Launch Event Launch Month program that's going to run for pretty much 30 days, 31 days after these Challenger decks come out on January 19th. And so what they're doing, which is, you know, really cool and something that I kind of hope they do uh, more of, is they're adding some special redemption only promos to their loyalty store. And one of them is this Get the Scoop Above. There is a second one that is a, a Fey alt art. They're not both chibis. This Get the Scoop is, is sort of a stylized chibi, different different style than the ones that we saw for those MHA promos. Uh, the other one is, I believe, a, a copy of the six diff that is in the Challenger decks that the name is escaping me, but it's got a really nice Fey art on it. So there's going to be those two promos as well as a special play mat. Now, these promos are going to cost 250 points each, so if you want to play a set of both of them, that's 2,000 points. Now, that's a lot of points, right? However, they are going to reward you for playing these new Challenger characters at your locals with enhanced numbers of loyalty points. So, for each Challenger character that you try out, so there's four of them, you can do this four times, you will get 200 bonus loyalty points. And then, of course, you get 50 just for playing in your locals, so you get two... So, basically, play in... Play each of the characters, you're, you're, you get placed out of one of these cards right away. And you've most people probably have a bunch of loyalty points stored up at this point just from playing in locals, playing in provisionals. Uh, you know, unless you're, well, even if you're in a hurry to get a plus ultra promo, you're not allowed to. So, uh, you know, I don't know how many people are ordering those off of Redemption. There's probably some of it, but in any case, if you, even if you don't have the points signed up, saved up already, you can get halfway there just by playing the four different characters and then on top of that there's another a bonus 250 that you get uh for playing the character that wins the most uh, across the promotion which basically means you know just play all four characters and then there's another 250 that is up front for playing all four characters basically you play all four you get 500 bonus points you get 1500 effectively once you factor in the the four locals points and then then you're pretty much there this kind of the idea they want people to spend the four weeks after the challenger comes out trying out those characters not everyone's going to do this because uh people have lcqs uh 32 well 28 people have an hlc to get ready for that sort of thing but a little bit of extra incentive to to try all these out maybe even playing some webcam weeklies right to shore that up so you don't have to spend your all of your events the next four weeks playing these uh so that's pretty cool all of this stuff is going to go up on the store after the event ends, you're going to get your points after the event ends, so you won't be able to order these promos until mid-February, mid-late February, somewhere in there. We'll see. You know, it's a new UGN. So been a little shaky. We'll, we'll see how the implementation of this goes. Uh, one little tweak on this, on the article, it, it says that there's going to be a pop-up that asks you for the character that is not implemented. I don't know if that was planned to happen or if someone just was thinking about the old UGN. You are going to have to submit a UGN deck list for your locals to do this. So if you want to get credit, make sure that when you register for your locals, you put a deck list in there. Uh, I assume your locals aren't going to deck check you. It probably doesn't actually reflect the exact deck that you're playing, but put something together. Uh, you know, ship it up there. And that way you'll get credit for playing the different characters. Uh, so th that's the big main thing. You know, if you're looking at these... Challenge deck previews, if three out of four of them pique your interest, maybe, you know, try them all out, to take a token shot with the fourth one, that sort of thing. Might as well get all these points unless you're really, really swimming in them, right? Other than that, a bunch of things that are don't take too much time to talk about. Uh, first of all, this past weekend, uh, I had the pleasure of casting with, along with Kevin and Jesse, the Winter warm-up webcam event uh, number two, the, the second of the two webcam events they set up to sort of bridge the gap uh, between Nationals and the HLC. Will Howard won with Shigaraki 3, a deck he's been working on for a very long time. <laughs> so not too much of a surprise there. Shigaraki 3 is a good deck. Will Howard has played a lot of it. 
Uh, he's played a lot of evil seven hand size that hacks check by one in the past, <laughs> in in past metas and, and formats. Uh, so he won. Uh, we saw it was an interesting top cuts. We had some uh, really a, a rise in what I'd refer to as sort of aggressive scaling decks that maybe aren't the greatest at turn twoing people, but that they get a lot of you know scaling stats over the course of the game through one manner one manner or another, and then that way they can sort of get up and over some of these defensive decks. But in the end, it was Shigaraki three winning. Uh, so congrats to Will and to everyone who topped. Uh, also, you know, over the past week or so, they have released all of the... They've done all of the previews of the Challenger cards, all the previews of the alt arts in different places and formats. I'll link to all that in the description in case you missed any of this. Uh, they also have card images, at least of the non-alt arts, the original arts on the Discord. Uh, and before this, they did this sort of enhanced video where... They did, I think, a couple extra previews and, and kind of just brought some UBS Games employees on to talk about the set, what they did for it, how, you know, how their part of working on the set played out. Um, kind of an interesting lesson. It is pretty long. Uh, it, if you've seen all the previews, you're probably not going to get too much new information there, but if you want to check it out, you can. I'll link to the write-up article. It'll have a link to the YouTube in there in case you sort of want the written summary instead. In the last bit of news, you know, it was a pretty quick video, uh, we got some retro bans announced today. So normally, a ban announcement was would have been supposed to happen a week ago. Uh, they decided, at first they said they were delaying it by a couple of days, then they said, now nah, we'll delay it till next week. Uh, either because they were taking some time to decide what they wanted to do with retro, or they wanted to see this winter warm up and make sure nothing, you know, really toxic popped up before the HLC. Maybe a mix of both, but in any event, uh, MHA Spotlight Untouched, no surprise, there's there's nothing really jumping out that seems particularly close to Banimal. You know, people are gonna be people are gonna be worried about Jiro until the end of time, but she's hasn't you know, ha hasn't shown a whole lot, you know, aside from Mitch making every top cut on the planet with her, which hasn't changed in, since whenever he started playing her. <laughs> He's basically been one tricking her this whole time. Uh not not a whole lot else we're seeing from her, so. Uh, you know, no, nothing going on with MHA Spotlight. The the back alley and the CED bands are gonna uh, just do their thing for now. But we did get some retro bands, and these are uh, basically targeted at infinite loops, at at turn one combos, uh, that sort of thing. You know, Twisting Azure Inferno was uh, kind of been a problem ever since uh, they started playing any of these older formats. There's just way too many actions that you can just play and draw a card, or play and draw multiple cards, and they all remove from your card pool, and you can just uh, make monstrously huge Twisting Azure Infernos without, uh, with way too much reliability <laughs> for, for what that deck's doing and, when it, and being able to do that on turn one a lot of the time. Uh, Cadence Blindfold was a big source of infinite loops. They also hit a bit of a surprise to people with a card called Shokiga Hosen, uh, which is kind of just part of this meme Zolt deck, but the, the payoff for the meme was that, you know, I mean, you, you, the rest of the deck functioned well enough to, like, pseudo-compete, but it, it's... The, the big joke was that Shoki Gahosin is a, a nearly unblockable 10 damage move he could play on turn 1, uh, or play two of them on turn 1, and, and therefore just kind of turn 1 kill somebody if he got two in his opening hand, which obviously didn't happen that much, but uh, they clearly didn't really like having that around, so so they went ahead and hit Shoki Gahosin. Uh, so if you're, you're planning for the retro event and you were looking to do something... Well, there are a lot of really abusive things you could be doing, but if it involved these cards, uh, you're not going to be able to do it, <laughs> pretty much. And you maybe don't need to hack, you know, if you were playing like specific loop Haiti kinds of things, you won't necessarily need to worry about that. But yeah, uh, that's everything for a little news catch up here. You know, stay tuned at the end of the week on Friday or, or perhaps, you know, midnight Thursday night. Uh, uh, we're gonna, uh, The embargo is going to be up on the Challenger deck uh, box openings. Uh, I, I did get one of each. I did an opening video before everything was previewed. So, because I always talk about cards in these anyway, I figured I might as well do it as an also a first impressions thing. Uh, so you can get my early initial takes, snap takes on all of these cards. Uh, high on some of them, but not very high on others. Kind, kind of a mixed bag. Uh, I also get to see, you know, my first look at the alternate arts and how those are set up. 
So, you know, that, that should be pretty good. You know, if you've watched my other box openings, you kind of know the drill by now. Uh, and then, you know, besides that, you know, not too long after these challenger decks come out, we are going to get into Dark Tournament preview season. Uh, I'm expecting to have a video for one of those kits. Uh, thinking about, you know, I'm always thinking about doing some other things and I may or may not have the motivation to do them. Uh, you might see... Unrelated to UVS, you might see an altered video or two start popping up on this channel. Uh, I'm kind of, I, I'm, I, I'm kind of waiting till there's a, a good how to play video that I can link to because I don't want to do a how to play video. Um, I just want to kind of do some some sort of video content on the game because um, I'm pretty interested in it. it the Kickstarter's coming up soon, uh, so I'm gonna do a couple things for that probably. Uh, but yeah, that, until then, next thing, probably on Friday with these uh, Challenger deck you know, box openings and, and, and some card first impressions. So stay tuned for that. Until then, have a good week.